Okay, morning guys. So it's a beautiful sunny Thursday morning in Dresden this morning and I am just outside the vehicle registration office and I'm going, I've got all of my information with me and I'm going to go in there and hopefully when it all works out well get my number plate. So I'll give you an update just after this. Oh god, okay, so um, I'm back in the car now and uh, <laughs> I'm so relieved. Um, I have the registration for the car, so it's all registered uh, in the correct way. Um, and yeah, my, my appointment was at nine o'clock this morning and I think it's now, I don't know what the time is, it's something like 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, and yeah, there was an issue with the paperwork and it meant going back to the DECRA uh, and then it actually entailed having the, um, the VIN number uh, uh, marked onto the chassis. So I, when they were telling me this, I thought, oh my God, you know, it, would all, it was all going really well at the counter. She was saying, uh, yeah, that's all in order, all that's paperwork. And the only thing that I had to do is, is uh, choose a, uh, a registration number. And luckily the one I wanted, um, my personalized plate was available. And uh, she said, oh, you have to go and check that it can actually fit on a, a smaller size number plate because they have a standard one at the front and very similar to the English one, this sort of 200 by 280 mil at the back. And as I was getting that checked out, they said, yeah, that fits. It's fine. So I was really positive. I thought, oh, fantastic. That fits. When I got back to the counter, uh, she said, I told her that good news. It fits all the numbers and letters fit. And she said, uh, that is good news, but I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. And it was this, the fact that the VIN number didn't marry up with uh, the the um, the German paperwork. And this was an appointment I had last week with the DECRA and so on. And she said, just nip over the road and uh, get it changed. So I went and did that. And it turns out it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, and it meant that we had to have the, the VIN number actually, as I said, said to you before, um, hammered into the uh, into the chassis. And I was like, oh, Christ, um, how long is that going to take? And they were really cool. The guys at Decra were really, really cool. And um, they said, well, the guy that I dealt with last week, Herr Preller, who actually uh, gave the uh, certificate for the car, he was out and about. And then they were, I could really hear them talking in the background in the office, and I could hear they were making an effort. But they were like, well, he's out now. I've given him a call. He knows the score. Um, he needs you to give him a call in half an hour. And uh, he can he can go up to oh yeah he could do it today, and then they said um, can you bring the car to us and I was like well that means hiring another trailer getting it on the trailer driving half an hour through I was like oh, that's going to be really difficult, and he said I tell you what we'll send our man up to your workshop, so I went out of their office gave him a call and he was really cool about it and he said yep yeah, let me just go to the to his office which is where I was at the time he was out and about. Picked up his um, up to, up his tools. I can't remember what they're called, but the uh, the little um, the little tools with the numbers and letters on the end of them, um, like a die, like a die set. I can't remember what you call them. And anyway, he uh, and he said, "Yeah, let me go to the office." And and I said, "I'll wait for you at the office, and then we can drive together to my to my garage." And that all worked out. We drove up to my garage. I took the wheel off the uh, the the uh, the Land Rover. Um, and cleaned up the chassis there a little bit, put a rug down for him, and he and he banged in the numbers. And he, as I'll show you uh, on a picture that I took, um, he had everything with him in his suitcase. It was like James Bond, you know. He opened his suitcase, and he had a computer which opened up as the suit uh, as the briefcase. It wasn't a suitcase; it was a briefcase open. And then underneath the uh, the laptop, he had a printer, and he had all the the the, the right paper with him, and all the certificates, all the uh, the stamps, and he printed me off all of the new papers there and then. So he changed um, the, the the mistake in the paperwork, printed it all off, and we had a chat. And then I went straight back to the um, registration uh, office. And uh, and I, I didn't really try and make another appointment because appointments are really difficult to get at the moment. I just turned up again. I, I just turned up and I'd already had a chat with the with the lady at the, uh, at, at the gate cause, or at the door because they only let people in after they've checked that you actually have an appointment. Um, at this registration office. It's all pretty strict purely because of corona. And I just walked in and, said, and they said, uh, uh, oh yeah, I recognize you from, from before. 
and they let me go through, which was really cool. I did not expect it. And the lady at counter 20, which was where I was uh, in the morning, uh, she was just going off for her lunch as I got to the counter. And I said, I've got all the, I've got everything sorted out. Can we carry on? And she said she had to go, but could I wait for 10, 15 minutes? And, uh, and, and somebody else um, took her place. And lo and behold, long story short, um, we got everything sorted. So on the chair next to me are my registration plates. I have one standard one for the front and a, a very cool one for the back, which is essentially the same, virtually the same size as the one that I took off as the original English one. And because they're metal, um, you know, they've all got, you know, lots of important things. I, 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 I wanted to film them making them actually, but uh, it's quite an involved process. You've got to go to a different part of the office and then you've got to get them printed and then you've got to take them back to the other office. You've got to pay for it. And then you've got to wait in line to get these, um, these stickers on here and then you get your paperwork. So in that bag there, I've got all of the paperwork for the car. Um, and ah, oh Christ, I was just so relieved and so happy. I couldn't stop smiling, you know, once I got them. So, um, those are the number plates. So the DD is from, for Dresden, DD. Um, and I don't know if anybody, any of you can work that out, but the H is for the historic, uh, vehicle. So that's to certify that it's a historic vehicle. And that is JC53. And the J and the C are my initials. And the, the only way I could get anything resembling the Land Rover, um, was to put a five and a three. So the five is an S and the three is a three. So, uh, JC S3. Uh, series three. So if that wasn't available, then I probably could have uh, done like uh, 1978 or 78 JC 78 for the car. But you can't really use 88 because I'd already thought of 88 inch. But 88 is a sign, apparently, as my, my wife rather hastily pointed out when I had it on the list. The 88 number is a sign for neo-Nazis or a symbol for neo-Nazis. So I didn't really fancy that going on the car. Um, so I changed my list, but basically that one there, which I got was the first on the list and it was available. So I was just so pleased, but it's just been a bit of a roller coaster today because it went from going really well to going like disastrously badly. Uh, and then everybody really helping me out and, um, pulling together and, and getting it done. I, I'm so surprised and so pleased that that every, you know all these these different people at the Decra and at the Zulassungsstelle that they were all so helpful I mean it was just brilliant um really really cool and now I'm going to go back across town for the fourth time today it takes precisely 29 minutes to get from here to my to my garage and I'm going to fix those number plates to the car and go for a drive pick up my wife or whoever's at home my kids uh, and just go for a quick spin around Dresden. So I can't, I just can't really believe that it's, uh, that it's got to this point, you know. It's been such a lot of work to get here. And, um, bloody Nora, I've got the paperwork in the, in the bag there and the number plates there. And, uh, I'm going to go back up to the, to the garage now to, to fit them and, and go for a drive on the open road. So I'll see you soon. Okay, guys, so I've just got back to the... Uh, I keep calling it the office. This is not my office. <laughs> it feels like I'm at the office because I keep going here at regular times, like nine till five. But I'm back up at the workshop and I have the number plates over here and I am going to get those fitted and put the wheel back on and go for a drive. Okay, so this is actually quite a significant moment. So I thought I'd take it off time lapse and uh, take the number plate off in real time. So I was able to keep the original number plates, uh, which is really cool because when I registered the Porsche, I had to have them, I had to hand them over. So I've been able to keep these, which I'm very happy about. I've got the the rear one over there. So 
what I need to do is over here they I mean I guess I could drill holes in the number plate itself well maybe I might reuse those actually um, in the metal number plates but I don't really want to do that so what I've got is the, the specific uh, plastic holders um, which I shall show you in a minute so that goes up there The number plate up there already very exciting so that is the the plastic holder so it comes with a whole bunch of little spaces and so on so what i've got to do is see if i can line up some of these holes here which i can't obviously um, yeah i'm just going to make some holes from the back and put, put those screws back in actually i think that's probably the best way to do it this little section here to fit the number plate that actually folds down so you have to have to lift it up a little bit in order to allow it to fold down like that so put that in there The moment <laughs> we've all been waiting for. Wouldn't it be funny if it doesn't fit? Why doesn't it fit? Okay, so just setting up the back one. Uh, and this holder that I bought actually goes that way up, really. So you can put a, like a, a a workshop sign under there or something but unfortunately that doesn't line up with any of the holes there that I've already drilled and I'm not making any more uh, in the fan so if I turn it up that way then I get the right spaces and it just fits that way around which is no big deal so I'm just gonna make some marks and cut it or drill it at least Okay, so finally got that on. I actually ended up using one of the bolts from the original holder, so happy days. So it needs to go up and in this time. They are very tight, these things, I must admit. Go on, in you go. Lovely. Yes, so that is the rear number plate attached. So, ready for the road. The insurance is in place. Oh man, so cool. On the back, and on the front. So, I'm now going to take it down to my house and go for a little drive. Um, let's see who's home, maybe my wife or my kids. Uh, they can all fit in the car. So I'm going to give them a call now and warn them that I'm coming. But the silly thing is the battery's dying on this phone and the memory's full on the other phone. So I will do a first drive video when all of that's sorted out. So I'll see you soon. So, first drive out on the open road. Let's see how well it starts.
on the open road, driving. It's really loud. Okay, so every time we stop at a traffic light to video, uh, it, it goes green again, which is happening now. So it's going really well anyway, very loud. <laughs> okay, so I've just pulled off the road here and I've taken the Land Rover for its first relatively long drive and it seems to be doing really well. Uh, it's keeping good temperature and the overdrive works well. I certainly noticed a difference with these huge tyres compared to the 750s. The 750s are much narrower um, and yeah I think I prefer the 750s actually the way they feel on the road but uh, you know it's, it's small things really. I mean it's great fun to be driving it. It's really really very cool. So I've just as I say pulled off off the road here. We're not actually allowed to be here but uh, but there it is. Couldn't resist and I'm going to turn around and, and go home now. So driving the Land Rover, finally. Lots of um, rattles and squeaks. Can't hear anything now, of course. And here's overdrive, ready? Woo! <laughs> 